Hello, Baron Katie. Hello, Lilu. Thank you for accepting to do this interview over Skype. It's my privilege. Um, I'm really excited to interview you. You are famous around the, the world for the work. Uh, and I'm really happy to discuss this and discuss all the wonderful things that you're about uh, uh, to, to do. You're, you're going in Europe. You're coming to Europe this summer in July, all months of July through Amsterdam and London and Paris and all that. So we're really excited to have you. Um, so as most people know, you're the author of many books, six books, I think, is that right? Oh gosh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> many books, including mm -hmm. Loving What Is, you're the creator and the founder of the work. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I wanted to start this interview really by uh, talking of this, these, these times. Right now, a lot of things are happening on this planet. People, a lot of, uh, I, I receive a lot of negative, you know, people really going through a hard time and yeah, depression exactly. is happening, loss of control, um, anxieties, even suicides. What is going on? What is your perception of this? Because you had to go through it yourself many well, years ago. People are, um, they're projecting the past and the future in their heads. For example, if you imagine what the future is going to be, fear happens. That's how it's created. And I love that the future is not now. And now is the only time we can really live in, if, if at all, you know, like right here, right now. And uh, this is good. You know, this is really good. And people imagine themselves into the future. It can be terrifying, especially as we watch television and listen to the news and we experience um, things like global warming and we see destruction and the loss of our forests, etc. And we miss the grace of this moment now and the forest, for example, and the trees and the sky and the beautiful, the beautiful experience of right here, right now. It's a gift. It's a gift. So anytime, you know, I, I'd like to say, if you want a little fear and terror, get a future. Mm, yeah. And if how, you want, and if we... you want a little, if if you want a little depression, get a past. Yeah. So how can we be back in this present moment? I hear that you're all about being in this inquiry, continue to question those stressful thoughts instead of identifying yes, with them. Is those, that right? Well, you know, those thoughts are about the past and future. So I invite people to identify what they're thinking and believing in those moments of depression and fear and to, to put them on paper. And on the work.com, there's a judge your neighbor worksheet and people can download it at no charge. And they don't have to fill in an application or anything. They can just go there and print it out and just follow the simple directions, one through six on that judge your neighbor worksheet and then question those thoughts they've identified that are the cause of the depression and the fear and to set themselves free in that. And, you know, the work has, it has the major reputation of working. It really does work because the power of the work is, is simply the answers within the individual doing the work. That's the power, and that is um, where we find our freedom as we tap into that knowledge inside of us. And of course, that's what inquiry, that's why inquiry is so powerful. Mm. A lot of people say whatever you experience in life is, is actually something that you have inside. So is, is it coming from this understanding? Because I, I hear that you receive kind of the work and all this information at 43 years old, kind of very suddenly, and, and we've all heard a lot of that, that particular moment, but yes. it's, it's quite special to switch that suffering. The same way that Eckhart Tolle 
maybe have has also received some kind of enlightening moment, but not all of us, unfortunately. Yes, you know, I think I think that um, that the valuable thing about that moment for me is I saw that when I believed my thoughts, I suffered, and when I didn't believe them, I didn't suffer. So we can't, you know, I've come to see that this is true for every human being as well. So the, the gift I have to offer is inquiry, and I don't expect people to use it, but it's my job to offer it. And it, it, it's really a powerful experience for people who sit in their own minds uh, as they're questioning what they're believing in those moments of as, as we're saying, fear and depression. So in that moment, you know, it was all so clear to me. And then I tried to tell people about what I experienced in that moment. And there's no way that can be told or described. It's really beyond description. How can you describe nothing? Every time you try to describe nothing, um, and by nothing, I mean with the greatest respect, you know, that indescribable. And, um, uh, but what I could do is offer those questions that can take people into that experience. And that's what seems to be going on for many, for millions of people across the planet now. We are passing it on from one to the other to the other, you know, generations away from me on people sharing the work and it's um it's a beautiful way to peace and uh, it doesn't uh, and it doesn't need a teacher so yeah 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 i'm very interested to know how did you this change this radical change that you lived back then how did you how did you work it out with your family i heard it was a little bit turbulent and, and a lot of us going through transformational times like we have to face the the, the, the friends and the family's reaction and the boss and this and that. So how did you dealt with that and how did you slowly but surely, you know, brought it to millions? You know, um, I was I was very agoraphobic, which means the fear of li li leaving my home, leaving my house. And for me, um, it was it was it was a lot just to leave my bedroom, and and. Um, in that kind of terror, you know, fear of the marketplace is what they call it. And, and you know, in, in that state of mind, it's really difficult to um, clear one's head. But in that moment, as I lay sleeping on the floor and, um, and I woke up to, you know, I woke up in, in, in that place my eyes opened and and in place of all that darkness was this this amazing world that i had no view into prior to that moment and mm. and the way my family reacted to the shift was um it was not easy for them you know they saw they saw, like my children, they saw their mother's body, but, but it was not I. And it, it's like, who is this woman walking out of the bedroom? Who is this woman that is smiling? Who is this woman that is so high functioning? Who is this woman that when I say something or I spill the milk, she is not angry? In fact, she smiles and, and, and says it's okay, and and it, it's like, for example, if one of my children spilled milk at dinner, it would be like they are upset and looking at my reaction, waiting for me to be angry, and it doesn't happen, and that's very confusing for them. It's like, what has what is living in that body we call our mother mm. and and this was a constant state and and you know i watched them occasionally still waiting for a kind of reaction that doesn't come but now they understand that that 
something terrible is not going to turn in me onto them. And so that's a, that's a lot of fear that they lost. And they have, um, over these years, began to really trust this peace, you know, projecting that old mother onto this body is, um, has been a journey for them and other people in my life that, 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 mm. I've, that I have known. But uh, how do I deal with it? You know, at first I invited them to whatever you want to say, it's okay. And mm. they would say, are you sure? And I would say, yes. So, so they began to introduce me to my old self. And that's how I've been able to, to um, keep one foot in what I call the dream world and, and yet not be the dream, not even the dreamer. Mm. So um, um, they would say, Mom, when I was five years old, you, you told me that I did it wrong and I was so ashamed and, and angry and hurt, for example. They might say something like that. And so that's how I was introduced to my old self. So... I could listen from one, from both places, you know, as that um, apparition in their mind, in other words, as that mother. And, and I found that I have, I have three children and none of them had the same mother. So I found all these, these definitions of, of their mother and they were all raised by the same mother. But um, as perception would have it, um, you know, it's just like, like the ego. If we all look to ourselves, it's like the ego is. Um, it identifies, you know, from moment to moment to moment. It's never the same identity, and it's you know that's the ego's challenge to identify as something. And of course, mind is is not a physical thing. Mind is if you put all your thoughts, collected them and put them in a basket, and you looked in the basket, it would be absolutely empty. So you can imagine the apparent mind identifying as a physical as physical form. That's quite a trick. So it's constant, and so each moment we could say a new identity. Like I'm the one sitting here, and I'm the one talking, and I'm. Byron Katie, and then you may think or believe that you are are Lilu and you're um, sitting there and you know all these identities and and then as mine would have it, these images of past and future, we believe that's I and that it really happened. And it's like can you imagine a planet where of 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 you know peopled by human beings that believe the images in their head are real when it's just a movie. And, you know, that's, that, that's, that ego is very powerful. But um, at the same time, a terrified child, afraid of being nothing and what would happen to its life, you know, like the fear of death, the fear of life, the same. Um, you know, this is, um, this, I'm finding myself um, on, on saying a lot and and apologize if it seems um, a little too far out. But my family, how did they deal with it? Um, uh, eventually very well. You know, love is very powerful. It's, yeah, it seems it's, like from a, if, if we speak from a, a loving uh, consciousness from a loving place we could see pretty much anything and actually even situations become quite funny when we see when we see your workshops people laugh a lot i mean those those thoughts become quite hilarious yes. do you do you crack up during the day like that well you know i do 
I do. I was interviewed yesterday by a, 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 a lovely woman that 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 actually said what you were saying. It's like you know, it's is it always so funny? But once you understand um, that it's all a state of mind, it does really become hilarious because there's nothing terrible going on. There never has been. There never will be. It's simply a state of mind that one is experiencing in the moment that is confusing them. Um, you know, false identification. Could, could we say that that's what it is to be a spiritual being having a human experience? Do you, do you feel like a spiritual person? Do you think that's what it is to, to really set free the soul, the spirit, to express itself beyond these limitations that we experience sometimes? Well, you know, I, I, um, I'm, I can't exactly track where you're coming from, but every human being is simply pure imagination. And so, um, and I don't know your definition of spiritual, but for me, I would see that simply as peace, authentic mm. peace. Mm. Peace that, that, that is beyond the, um, the ego's comprehension. And a little confusing for the ego at first, but eventually the ego prefers it because it has has discovered its true identity and all the fear is gone and it absolutely can dance. Mm. The, 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 how do we know that we're taking truly the, 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 the right actions in life or that we're truly... There's no, there's no argument in your head. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if you if you determine that going to the left is the right way to go, the worst that can happen is what you're thinking and believe. And if, if you choose to go turn to the right, the worst that can happen is what you're thinking and believing. And if you do nothing, the worst that can happen is what you're thinking and believing. And all the while, we're on the perfect path. There are no wrong paths. So, so you're saying really reality is is like this 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 movie we're in that we're living and that we're creating and we're having the events, the people, the everything right there, as we project it, as we in the think moment. from the inside. Yes, in the moment. In the you're, moment, you know the images and and the the thoughts we're believing about the images and the way the way we define what we see. It's all happening in the moment, and in the moment, those images of past and future, and believing that we are that image, that we have been, that we're going to be, it, it can be uh, terrifying. And if, if you're witnessing out of a, a clear mind, it can be incredibly loving and dear and enlightening. I remember interviewing Ram Das that was saying, you know, about loving awareness and it's so thick. He's like, Lilu, this is so thick. Love is so thick. I love it. When he spoke of loving awareness. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. You know, he had a he had a, 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 another birthday um, just recently. He's in his uh, early eighties, but his eighties in and oh just you know, what a what a dear. Mm -hmm. This grace, I, I could feel it through him, and he's re really good, like you, at, at, at describing something. We can feel it, and we want to live there permanently. You, you have somewhat that that chance or that happening. That it's it seems permanent with you. I guess mm -hmm. that some people experiencing the work have it on and off, and it's a continuous mm -hmm. exercise. So, how mm -hmm. does that match with your experience? You the know? the work is um, it's a practice. And um, and that people sit in, and you know when you, for example, if you had the thought, um, he doesn't care about me, and you just sit in those four questions and meditate on the question: Is it true? He doesn't care about me. Is it true? Can I really know that it's true? He doesn't care about me. 
And just to sit in that and notice how you react when you believe that thought and the stress that takes over and the images that that appear and your reaction out of those and 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 then just sit in who would you be without that thought he doesn't care about you and just contemplate that in the same situation who would you be without the thought and then to experience the opposite he does care about me and to see in in that situation and moment what you may have missed. It could be that person is actually being very caring toward you and because of what you were thinking and believing, you missed it. You overlooked it. You were not on the same page. And so it, it is, it's a practice just to sit in that. And um, as you know, I invite people who are stressed out to identify what they're thinking and believing, to write it down, and to question it. And each time people do that, they become more loving, caring, kinder human beings. And the world begins to shift, and the world is internal. As the mind shifts, the world shifts. So how can I love the world if I don't love my thoughts? The thoughts create the world. They, they're, they're an illusion or a dream. So as the mind, as it continues to question itself, as the mind begins to literally love itself, fall into understanding love itself then the world that it see that it continues to perceive to project is a beautiful world and it is the opposite of denial it's where it is really seen out of its authentic self and um, and we're left with you, you know I as I recall, it was Einstein that we gave credit to for saying, you know, the most important question is, is the universe friendly? And so that's really what I'm inviting the world to. You know, it's a friendly universe. Don't believe me. Discover it for yourself. And if I see the world as a frightening place, then I look to this. I don't try to change the world. I look to this. And until I can see that it's a friendly universe, my work's not done. So that's the challenge I offer to everyone interested in such ideas. Mm, that's why we're happy to have you in Europe because there's quite so much to do here. <laughs> you, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, I, I am so looking forward to that nine-day school that I do there in Germany, and I'm so looking forward to coming to, to France and, and my other stops in Norway and, and Amsterdam and London and Stockholm and Oslo. Um, it's here in front of me in Paris and Bern and Cologne, and then um, I end the tour with uh, that nine-day school in Bad Neuenahr. When we, when we're not possessed by a vision, but when we're carried by such a, su such an inspiring and empowering uh, idea and, and wish, you know, for this planet to transform, I guess you find, I guess you find all your energy in it because you're in your seventies now, right? Yes. Early seventies, yes. and you're more radiant than ever, and you're going on this month's tour in fr in, in in Europe. I mean. This is what is this this drive? Huh? This 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 energy coming from? It's an it's it's like cause and effect. Where there's an invitation, then then it's like a magnet. It's you know it's it's um, it's just another way for the self to meet the self. You know what wouldn't I say yes to if it were possible? And I know I just. Um, one of my invitations is to Nairobi and mm. and and I can say yes to that and do an entire event 
just as you and I are, you know, I, I don't have to travel to all of these. I can travel the way you and I are traveling right now. So in this, in this age, um, it, it, it's a beautiful thing when everything is virtual, just like the mind. You know, I watch my grandchildren on these, the, the video games, and they're, they're, they're in a virtual world, and, and the world really is just like that in our heads. So it's as though I'm witnessing, um, I'm witnessing the apparent human race leaving the material world and going completely into the virtual, which is, which is closer to um, reality than this physical, this physical um, apparent world that we have dreamed up. Yet it feels so good more than ever to meet in person. Like we have this urge to, I feel, to come together yes. in physical form as well. That's very, yeah. like we have this urge for eating healthy. This this need, it, it feels like it's coming finally from the inside instead of being bombarded from messages outside or hearing that, you know, th th that's where the switch is that, could that be the switch happening well, inside it, out? Yes, it's um, as, as the mind clears on um, the things you describe um, become so clear, like maybe it, it, it's like in, in my own experience, it's like I did the work and smoking quit me. I did the work and drugs became just not necessity. I did the work and, and poor health left me. And even on my deathbed, I would be in the perfect health for me. And I have, um, and everyone is is really speaking from their from their deathbed. If um, they're speaking from um, a false reality, but yes, sweetheart, yes, it's it's um, the clearer we get, the the kinder our life becomes, and um, and until you no longer need. Um, false reality. Yeah. You know, it's... Yeah, I think, I, I think you know, the, as simple as I can say it, it's, it's like, um, let's say that... It's, hmm. This is this is difficult. Let, let's say there was someone I didn't like. I look to me. That's that's on me, and feel what it feels like when you don't like someone. You know that is on me. So I would do a a worksheet, a judge and able worksheet, meditate on what I was thinking and believing in that moment, and then question it. And then when I see that person. I'm completely connected. No matter what they say or do, I'm connected. So now, you know, that was, that was not a, running into that person was not fun. Now, running into that person is fun. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't want to run into her again. I do want to run into her again. Mm -hmm. And until we see every human being through that kind of clarity, then our work's not done. We know that when we're fearful, you know, we're in a disconnect. And when our mind is clear, then we're connected to everyone and everything, including this, including this. Who cares if it's real or not? I'm connected. You know, there is nothing imagined or not that, that, um, that isn't welcome and in, in my world, in a, in a clear-minded world. You know, Katie, uh, Baron Katie, in the, um, I always want to call you Katie, but no, it's Baron. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you can call me Katie, that's fine. I love it because Gay Henriks, you know, his wife is Katie, and I just connect, you have similar energy to her. Ah. 
too. Um, Katie Hendricks. Um, anyway, but uh, in a spiritual conversation, some people say, oh, once you're enlightened or arrive at a certain stage, then there is no reason to be on Earth. Is that something that you well, would agree with? Well, I would say there's no way to be on Earth. It's not possible. Tell us more about that one. <laughs> well, on Earth, as is all, as are all things, is simply um, imagination, pure imagination, and that's a very limited experience to, to um, like any other symbol. I mean, what would you? What would stop you? You know, it's like, um, this is Earth. You know, it's like my name. If if you you can call me Byron Katie, and my birth certificate is Byron Kathleen. So you say, you know, what is your name? And I would say Byron Kathleen, and um, and no one asks me if I believe it or not, or if it's true for me. So um, it's like I'll say Byron Kathleen, but. Just don't ask me if it's true. You know, a birth certificate doesn't doesn't make something true. You know, if a person just really set in, who am I? It's quite a different experience. So then, how do you make choices? How do you say yes? Earlier on, I, you said yes. That felt right to go to Nairobi, mm -hmm. to Europe. How do you say those yeses? Where do you come from then? Well, you know, my my first thought is why not. Why not? And, um, um, and there's nothing to stop me, absolutely nothing, nothing. And then I hear, um, I hear things, or I can say in this discussion, I imagine things that are much more resourceful. And, and then who knows that will happen or not. Like this interview, I say yes. And I really look forward to it because I've heard about how sweet you are, and and I really look forward to it, and um, but and I say yes, and I never know if it's going to happen or not. It's really none of my business. My business is just to, just to love what is, and here we are, and it's it's kind of magical without a future. Just, you know. Mm -hmm. And yet we can't be available and, and be there for everyone. And, and there's maybe a misconception on saying no's. You know, we, it, it seems like we can say no from a loving place. And there is some things where we truly are needed now in some places. And, and so, so this is part of the work too, right? Clearing, clearing all well, those, 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 those things up so we can truly come from an authentic place. Can we say well, that? It, a, it's like I did the work and smoking quit me. And I didn't know that would happen. So as we do the work, in other words, as we question what we're believing, then those things just fall into place. They just fall into place. And, and you know, it, 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 there's an experience of, of like, this is, this is it. You know, this moment now. And any plan that I think happened, you know, I can talk about it, but it, it's like my name, you know, mm. it's just, this is the, this is it, right here, right now. No past, no future. Mm -hmm. I, I love what you said, I think it was with Oprah when she interviewed you on her, on her on the Soul series. Mm -hmm. um, no one can hurt me this is my job. Yeah, no one can this hurt me. That's my job. Thing. Yeah. Because a lot of us are so harmful against ourselves, isn't that true? We can be so... Like, I remember Oprah mentioning in some of her interviews how most of the people she would interview, one of the common things is that the people thought they were not good enough, not worth it, not... So there's this deep suffering, and... But we... we we come on earth being full and complete, don't we? And then things happen? Well, or this is invented. We, um, at some point, believe we exist. And that is the first movement away from reality. 
Mm. In other words, identity is born, and and the moment we believe in anything, that's the first separation, and it's you know inquiry can really take care of that, uh, especially for people who um, have had experience in meditation and being still. This work as meditation is very powerful, rather than just being in the moment to welcome the thoughts and images and, and write down what we're thinking and believing and to question it. It's, um, it's, um, it's quite a powerful process. Can you tell us how it evolved or how you evolved with, with this uh, technology, if we can say, or this how? And did that progress over the years, the past 25 years or so? Well, you know, um, um, not long ago I was looking at the, um, at the, at the little book that it goes free all over the world and it's on thework.com and it's just, just the, just a really the work in a nutshell. And um, I think it's in 34 languages at thework.com for anyone interested in, in specifically how to do the work. But um, I was looking at it, and all these years, you know, it's just, it's just been consistent. The, it used to be three questions, and um, it was, is it true? Can you really know that it's true? That was the first question, and then I separated them. Is it true? Can you really know that it's true? Can you absolutely know that it's true? So uh, it went from three to four questions, but the content hasn't changed other than um, the world absolutely, which um, for some people is very helpful. Is there some other things or books or teachings or you mentioned meditation earlier on that is complementary to, to, to the work that, is, that, that can be associated with and really works well? Everything. Um, yoga. Um, um, I mean, everything. It, it doesn't matter what a person's religion is. You know, this is about, this is just about people so many people, just people in trouble, just, just understanding that what we're thinking and believing in the moment creates our world. And yeah. so it doesn't matter what our backgrounds are or, or what our spiritual practice is or our daily practice is. It, it just doesn't matter. This, you know, to question one's mind just supports the practice we're in. For example, 12-step programs. It's, um, you know, the work is like um, all 12 steps and just, it's, it's just so, and A Course in Miracles and, and um, um, Science of Mind and, you know, we have very religious people that are, are come to the nine day school for the work and we have people that are so religious that they they bring all of their ways of worshiping you know with them into the school and we make great allowances for those this is not to take away anything beautiful this is just to question one's mind in the name of peace i remember doing the the, the work on on god oh my god that was a big one <laughs> yeah. just working on that's those that shakes you up and frees you up too. It, it is. really does. It takes a lot of courage to judge God in in you know on that worksheet, on that judge your neighbor, judge your God worksheet. But oh my goodness, the freedom to connect with that source that you experience as God 
it, you become closer, not more distant. But it does seem like like such sacrilege to dare to judge God on paper and to even consider it internally. But um, it's it's one of the. Uh, it's a very powerful experience, and, and as as you know from experience. Mm. So, how do we get from those those four questions to a nine day program? How come it's so long? Because, really, I mean, those questions are pretty direct, and amazing results happen right there. So yes. Why is it nine days? Well, no one needs to come to the school to to have um, to set themselves free. It's just something I offer. It's an invitation, and it's where uh, people come to just sit in this. We, we, um, ex I have like capsules, you know, one for fear and terror, and one for the physical body, and one for um, for prejudice, and and we have a communication capsule. And we have a capsule that's amazing on relationships. And we have a most ashamed capsule. And um, it's, um, it's, it's quite a school. We just take people and on God. And we, we take people through every, um, every possible source of, um, of problematic consideration in their life um, everywhere that they are suffering. And we try to cover it all in nine days. But the first school was uh, 28 days. So then mm -hmm. I then people said, you know, we just can't do that. Please, you know, shorten it. So then I think I went to 23 and then eventually 14 and then I went to nine, and it seems to it seems that most people that are serious about um, their practice and and can take that much time out of their life, and and um, you know it, it it works for them. It's not too much. It's not too little, and um, it's it's so extremely powerful just to sit in yourself for nine days through this through this. Um, It'd be pretty daunting. <laughs> it's 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 nothing short of radical. It's uh, people go home and their 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 family members often just do not recognize them. It's it's that it's that radical, and they're very grateful. I get a lot of thank you notes. Mm. The, can we say that sometimes we feel like a, a great balance in our life, in the work life, or in the love life? But it, do is it? Is it much, much better? Of, I mean, I'm sure it's much better, but when finding this equilibrium in all areas, in all, um, is, is that really um, uh, what, what, what we're supposed to do? I mean, is it really the, the work? Is, we're supposed to work on all areas? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it seems well, like we're if happy you, in one area, but, but if, true happiness needs to be balanced in all. Well, if you, if you look at the areas, sooner or later, you do have a problem in those areas. So I've just just condensed it all down to that's that's about it. So when people leave the school, they really have a head start for their practice. And then I have a continuing school for the work through the Institute for the Work, where mm. we where we continue and everyone's invited and it's it's um, a kind of aftercare and it's something I put together. Um, so people can sit in the work as a daily practice and as a, a community that is meditating on those questions or in those questions. Well, Baron Katie, thank you so much for for your joy, your your radiance, your your beautiful. It was a delicious interview, and I look forward to uh, spreading this message all across the internet and having you in Europe and that all Europeans uh, uh, come and gather in, 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 in what you put together. Thank you so much for coming in July 2014 to Europe mm -hmm. and for, for, for you beautiful co-creators watching this show, if you want to see more, there is the work.com, the work right? The work.com. Uh-huh. 
Thank, Thank you, Lulu. It, Lulu. <laughs> Lilu. Lilu. It was uh, very sweet being with you. Thank you. Much love. Bye-bye. Okay, cut. Excellent. Thank you. Well, that was a very odd interview. <laughs> that was I a know. very odd interview. I rarely uh, run off like that, but you are very, very dear to be with, Lilo. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I hope you had, I could feel your, your I didn't know, I, I, I've, it's all, I usually interview in person, so I'm not used anymore to Skype. And I try to always get in somebody's, my interview is uh, a world, but yours yeah. is so, <laughs> Woo, it's so big and so huge that it's 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 I was actually quite spiraling at first yeah. at the beginning of the interview and the energy took quite some time to land yeah. to, 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 to come. But it was it was it was really beautiful. I look forward to doing this in person one day, maybe when you're in Europe, because this this will uh, truly uh, be a blessing. But thank you for being you. I mean you're you're different. <laughs> you're welcome, Lilo. Thank you for being you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.